The Tampico affair was set off when nine American sailors were arrested by the Mexican government for entering off-limits areas in, well, Tampico, as they tried to refuel. The sailors were released, but the U.S. Naval commander demanded an apology and a 21-gun salute for this action. The apology was provided, but not the salute, and in the end, the response from U.S. President Woodrow Wilson ordered the U.S. Navy to prepare for the occupation of the port of Veracruz. While awaiting authorization from Congress to carry out such an action, Wilson was alerted to a delivery of weapons for Victoriano Huerta, who had taken control of Mexico the previous year after a bloody coup. And the delivery was due to arrive in the port on April the 21st, aboard the German cargo steamer, the SS Yapania. As a result, Wilson issued an immediate order to seize the port's custom office and confiscate the weaponry. On the morning of April the 21st of 1914, U.S. warships under the command of Rear Admiral Frank Friday Fletcher began preparing for the seizure of the Veracruz waterfront, sending men ashore in an attempt to establish a foothold. As the landing party moved towards Veracruz, a large crowd of Mexican and American citizens gathered to watch the spectacle. The invaders encountered no resistance, and they began marching towards their objectives along the main waterfront. This initial show of force was enough to prompt the retreat of the Mexican forces, which was led by General Gustavo Meaz. And in the face of this, Commodore Manuel Azeta encouraged cadets of the Naval Academy to take up the defense of the port for themselves. 200 line soldiers of the Mexican army would remain behind to fight the invaders along with the citizens of Veracruz. Although the landing had been nearly unopposed, Veracruz quickly became a battleground. By mid-afternoon, the Americans had occupied the majority of the waterfront, and Admiral Fletcher called a general halt to the advance, initially hoping that a ceasefire could be arranged. That hope rapidly faded, as he could find no one to begin to bargain with, and all Mexican troops left in the city were instructed to remain on the defensive, waiting for reinforcements. On the night of the 21st, Fletcher decided that he had no other choice but to occupy the entire city and not just the waterfront. Five additional battleships and two cruisers had reached Veracruz during the hours of darkness, and they carried with them an additional 1,500 men, all of whom landed ashore before sunrise. At 7.45 a.m. the following morning, the advance would begin once again. A regiment led by Navy Captain E.A. Anderson advanced on the Naval Academy in parade ground formation, making his men easy targets for the partisan barricades inside. This attack was initially repulsed, and soon the attack was renewed, with artillery support from the three warships in the harbor, which pounded the academy with their long guns for a few minutes, which silenced all resistance. And by the afternoon, U.S. troops had secured the town square and were in complete control of Veracruz. Some pockets of resistance continued to occur around the port, mostly in the form of hit-and-run guerrilla tactics, but by April the 24th, all fighting had ceased. Marines and soldiers continued to garrison the city until the U.S. withdrawal on November the 23rd, which occurred only after Argentina, Brazil, and Chile were able to settle the issues between the two nations at the Niagara Falls Peace Conference. U.S. Army Brigadier General Frederick Funston was placed in control of the administration of the port. Assigned to his staff as an intelligence officer was a young Captain Douglas MacArthur. While Huerta and Carranza officially objected to the occupation, neither were able to oppose it effectively, being more preoccupied by the events of the Mexican Revolution. Huerta was officially overthrown, and Carranza's faction took power. The occupation, however, brought the two countries to the brink of war, and worsened U.S.-Mexican relations for many years. The ABC powers held the Niagara Falls Peace Conference on May the 20th to avoid an all-out war over this incident. A plan was formed in June for the U.S. troops to withdraw from Veracruz 
after General Huerta surrendered to a new regime and Mexico assured the United States that it would receive no inedity for its losses in the recent events. Huerta soon afterwards left office and gave his government to Carranza. Carranza, who was still quite unhappy with the US troops occupying Veracruz, rejected to the rest of the agreement. In November 1914, after the Convention of Aqua Calientes ended and Carranza failed to resolve his differences with Revolutionary Generals Pancho Villa and Emilio Zapata, Carranza left office for a short period and handed control over to Alio Ortez. During this brief absence from power, however, Carranza still did control Veracruz, and after leaving Mexico City, he would flee to Veracruz, and he agreed to accept the rest of the terms of the Niagara Falls Peace Conference, and the United States troops would officially depart on November the 23rd. As an immediate reaction to the military invasion of Veracruz, several anti-American revolts broke out in Mexico and in other Central and South American nations. U.S. citizens were expelled from Mexican territory, and they had to be accommodated in refugee camps at New Orleans and San Diego. Even the British government was privately irritated, because they had previously agreed with Woodrow Wilson that the U.S. would not invade Mexico without prior warning.